Hey everyone, Tony Dragon here. Uh, sorry I haven't uploaded in a while. I was busy with a lot of things such as exams and physicals. Um, but that's not important to you guys right now. What's important is I'm back and I'm reacting to everything wrong with Batman the Killing Joke. Um, if you already watched my reaction to the Honest Trailer Batman the Killing Joke video, then you'll already know what my problems were with the movie and what I liked about the movie. So you can go ahead and skip straight to the reaction. Uh, if not, uh, it should be there. I'm planning on uploading both of these at the same time since they're both the same subject matter, the killing joke. So, yeah, depending on which one you actually came to see. Uh, my problems with the killing joke, well, let's say when I went to see it in the theaters, I enjoyed it. I had fun. But I'll admit, when I came out of the theater, I kept thinking about all the things wrong with it. You know, so many things that could have been done better. And obviously, most of the problems came from the original, the original content they put in to kind of fill out the movie and you know, make it an hour and twenty minutes long when it should have been shorter. In fact, I think uh, the new content was about forty minutes. Uh, at least from what I remember from what my friend told me. It was about 40 minutes and the original comic took up only like 25 to 30 minutes of the movie. I'm, I'm sitting there like, wow, I had no idea. Um, I never got to see the, I never got to read the comic book when it first came out, obviously, because I'm not old enough. I wasn't, I wasn't that born yet, so. But when I did manage to finally get to uh, read it, I thought it was okay. Honestly, at the time, I already read so many other comic books and seen so many other, you know, shows or manga, anime, you know, a whole slew of things that did so many other darker subject matters. And so, obviously, when I got to Killing Joke, I'm sitting there like, I can see how it created, you know, tension back then when it first came out, but honestly, today, it's rather tame. Um, so, that's what I was hoping for uh, with the movie with the theater adaptation I'm thinking it's like okay you have a chance to update it you know really push for that R rating you managed to get yeah, you managed to get an R rating take advantage of that you know do a couple of updates you know to the psychological torture like really you know push the audience you know make them feel uncomfortable and they managed it but not with the killing joke they made us uncomfortable with the Batgirl having sex with Batman scene Mission success? <laughs> that that part really drove me insane. I'm sitting there and I see this. I'm looking at this scene and I'm like, what? Because my view is I've always seen Batman as a father figure or a mentor to all of his sidekicks. To Batgirl, to Nightwing, you know, all the other Robins that came after Nightwing. You know, all of them were like his... Well, in a way, children. They were his students. So, when Batgirl all of a sudden has sex with Batman, I have to sit there in disbelief, like, huh? I mean, there have been many indications in many, you know, iterations, like comic books and TV, uh, I don't know about, I'm not sure about movies, where Batgirl shows some fascination with Batman. But... I was okay with that because I just looked at it as this, like, you know, small schoolgirl school girl crush. You know, she's obviously, you know, she, uh, she's just this physical, this fit, physically fit, intelligent, strong man, you know, and she just has this little crush on him. It's like, oh, it's cute, you know, whatever. But then, you know, to have Batman answer that with sex to Batgirl, it, it felt really wrong, like, what were they thinking writing that in, you know, at, at least at the time, you know, at least in the way they put that in, like, at least in the context, it felt really wrong for the, for the movie to do that, um, but other than that, you know, the rest of the Batgirl, you know, focused story at the beginning was okay. I mean, nothing really too new, but it was fine. Uh, then we got to the killing joke, and again, I said this before, and it felt, you know, rather tame. Like, 
yeah, it was following the comic book, but at the same time, it felt like the comic book had more impact to it, you know, in terms of, you know, the psychological torture, you know, in presenting the psychological torture to us, to the audience, the reader, than the movie did. Because we see Jim, we see uh, Commissioner Gordon go through that, you know, the ride, having these pictures shown, but all they really were were like close-ups of Barbara's, you know, of her eyes, her knees, her elbows. I'm just like... What am I looking at? What like, not not even a close up of the bullet wound or anything like that. I was just like, no, just a couple of shots here of her face, of her scared face, and you know maybe like her arm and legs. Like, look, bare skin. Oh, like I know Jim Commissioner Gordon was probably going through a lot in his head. Just like, did you kill her? Did, you know, did did you stab her multiple times? What did you do to her? Like, what did you do to her? What are you showing me? But I'm just sitting here like, what did you do to her? I, I don't see anything new. It's like, okay, you stripped her, obviously, but what happened after that? Like, that's it? Did you just strip, take her clothes and just leave? It's just like, ooh, I like this yellow blouse. I'm taking it with me. <laughs> um, So, yeah, I mean, I, it could be that I'm just so used to these things that when I saw it, just like, I, all I thought was, you know, this was tame. This was nothing. Like, why is this rated R? Um, And another problem I didn't really, you know, put too much attention to it because it was like the least problematic thing about the movie was you know the dialogue uh i mean the dialogue was fine but the delivery was just kind of eh i mean when mark Hamill was was the joker and he was like legitimately light laughing maniacally and being joker i just felt like yeah that is joker that's mark hamill the you know mark hamill was by far the best joker of all time at least from in my opinion i mean some of some others have done great work they've done you know they done great enough work that they can be you know uh, the the successor. Like I don't I won't mind, but Mark Hamill will always have that special place in my heart. You know, and I hear the when I hear when I hear him being Joker, I feel it down my spine. It's like, ooh, that's Joker. But there are more moments where it felt really rather un unenthusiastic, uh, especially before he became Joker when he was just a normal person. His lines didn't sound natural like. Like, I can't imagine this guy not being a psych psychopath or sociopath even before he became the Joker because he just didn't sound like he was actually feeling anything when he was speaking. You know, when he was supposed to be sad, I didn't hear a sad voice. I just heard a regular voice and, you know, and tears running down his eyes. It's like, is he, is he speaking normally with tears running down his eyes? It's like, maybe he's already a sociopath even before he became Joker. So, and who knows? Um, but yeah, other than that, uh, like I said, I, I, it was a good movie, but I felt my expectations were too high and it just barely met like average levels. So yeah, so, um, it's still a good movie, not bad. Just be ready for certain awkward moments, certain, you know, questionable decisions and, you know, kind of boring moments uh, here here and there yeah but uh yeah that's about it so um let's see what uh cinema sins thinks about it maybe he'll agree maybe he'll disagree maybe he'll nitpick a couple of things i didn't notice before so yeah here we go starting the video in three two one First of all, I realize this is probably not how you thought the story would start. You mean with narration? That's most movies these days, I think. Okay, I'm yeah. using animation to your advantage in a fantasy world, but this grappling hook doesn't go anywhere near where she needs it to go to get over this gap. Cartoon cop is way better than most movie cops because he actually shoots at the tires, but he's the same when it comes to aim. Freaking A! Yeah. Discount cursing. The inside of this truck is a Matrix Star Trek holodeck background of greenish squares. Also, yes, I know that is the netting inside the truck then, but my question is really this. Why does the truck need netting all along each side of it? Just what is this semi planning to haul, eh? A bunch of jackass? These asshats who waste tons of bullets firing on the Batmobile must be thinking, I've totally got that magic bullet that's gonna penetrate the f out of that bulletproof glass. Just watch. Really? Yeah. I admit the Batmobile is awesome and everything, but towing an armored truck? You 
can't just shoot a harpoon and manipulate that thing willy-nilly. It's thousands of pounds. After shooting at Batgirl many times, this guy decides, let's see if physics can take care of this. Batgirl doesn't get 75% skin burn from this forced high-speed bailout. It's a lot of fun. Yeah, she's probably the suit. No killing joke expert, but this movie seems very not killing joke to me so far. This yeah, it's all original content. Capabilities, as if it's in a helicopter or something. They said they could knock out the tracker on the armored car. I don't think they could plug a computer in their ass. I'm going to assume that even the nerdiest of computer nerds could not plug a computer in their ass, but it's possible I'm not thinking fourth dimensional. <laughs> Dr. Man, uh, Barbara's friend tries to hook her up with a man within the first few seconds we see her out of costume, because you didn't know you were watching How to Lose a Batman in ten days. My dad's yeah. setting up city cams. And reading a lot of 1984, but I don't think that's related. Zoom and enhance cliche. Also, it's good to know you can get to Gotham street cams just by going to the good old HTTP address. I'll free the F out. Freaking the F out. This villain embodies all the classic traits of villains with the compulsion of sarcastic clapping. Can't end the night without a kiss. But is it about vanquishing female foes that gets male villains all date rapey? No, seriously. I don't know. That stops off for coffee at the Starbucks on the way to the crime scene? What's that drive through conversation like? His name is Paris. <laughs> that's true. Paris that's what Paris. I kind of. <laughs> That's my friend when we were watching the movie. About it in movie does not excuse this ridiculously terrible character name. And that's it? Hey, you names are pretty are hard, man. Law. God damn it, Batgirl, yes. And this is not a male-female thing. It's a super experienced Batman, super inexperienced Batgirl thing. I yeah. I Brits like the salt air. That's racist. They're docked, like, close to town, right? Does this seem like a good spot to assassinate someone in broad daylight? Why can't they go with the let's take a ride method, where somebody's got a piece of piano wire in the back seat? These monsters totally wrath of Khan, these masked assailants. Look, I know Gotham is awful when it comes to crime, but they keep a truck involved in a crime in an unguarded impound lot, and just any asshole can come strolling through here and leave gifts. The first half of this Batman yeah. movie is a Batgirl movie, which is fine, I just wish they titled it correctly. You're getting hot. Hotter. Just out of curiosity, where did she put that still transmitting phone? Also, it's kind of insulting that Batgirl is this freaking stupid. Like, the confidence part, I'm totally down with. But the reckless part, surely she's better than this. This guy's talking Yeah, but then she's inexperienced, so. Sure, maybe he owns the bar. Batman still, was right on that part. Me have sexy yard on the walls like this. Batgirl black widows herself out of a hairy situation. Seriously, an elevator is your exit strategy? She came in through a window. Can't she go out that way? Yeah, oh, I mean. Oh, Batgirl defeats Batman? What the hell is going on? What the f First off, she wears a bra like that? Second, that top is that easy to remove? Third, how would you even get aroused in the bat suit? Not only is there limited room for things to move around down there, but even touching Batgirl's ass would be like wearing rose gloves while caressing the side of a radial tire. Also, did one of you just happen to have a bat condom on your belt? Because otherwise, bat pregnancy scare anyone? <gasps> Demon voyeur. Oh, that was fantastic. <laughs> I did like that. Like, what the fuck? Like, even he was surprised. Huh? Oh, the unnamed cafe utterly schools the business to the right on signage. Here's a small business tip. Don't put hieroglyphs on your business name or sign. People need to be able to read that. What do you do? We make copies. This coffee in Gotham City. So damn clingy. Feel trapped like I can't move. Someone forgot to not draw or animate this scene, so it wouldn't be in the movie. We got a tip he might be hiding out at the docks. Why the hell would he tell her this if she's off the case? Batman does not seem to understand that Batgirl lives by her own rules. We'll talk later. Animated Batman movie is much more sex in the city than I think it intended to be. I just yeah. noticed Batgirl decided to climb up and perch on top of this thing, which has to be the most uncomfortable place in Gotham to be a disappointing character. Whatever you assholes say because he's Batman to questions like, how does he know this, that, or the other thing, I present you Batman being completely unaware of his surroundings. And his Batmobile, with all the gadgets it has, can't detect a missile headed its way. 30 minutes in, still don't Totally a bad girl movie, and still totally not a Batman movie. Only 45 minutes left to turn it around. Must be that time of the month. I don't doubt this guy is an asshole and might say something like this. I just thought since we're in 2016 at all, we were past these kinds of insults being written into screenplays. Also, I don't envy you the beating that's coming after you made that remark, idiot. Meanwhile, in Gotham, the killing joke hasn't started yet. Barbara yeah. has a perfect view of every relationship in the city. Almost halfway through this movie, and still no Joker. Mark Hamill is probably as pissed about this as Leto is about Suicide Squad. Ah, uh, that's pretty true. Huh? Well, you could start by actually working at the library instead of filming your time with gossiping and looking at street cameras. Batgirl quits being Batgirl because something, something, abyss, something reasons. Karina came in. Yeah, her reason for uh, quitting was just kind of eh, nonsensical, like it wasn't necessary. After briefly eyeballing these corpses, the coroner came up with a pretty specific timeline for when these assholes die. Okay guys, we need a sexy shot of a cartoon woman, so let's get out the horny paint. Batman casually parks his car on the street and takes the long walk up the driveway, rather than keeping his ride nearby and out of general view. I got rights! How in the f*** did the Joker get another person into his cell, make him up to look like him, and then escape? 
Well, it's garish, ugly, and smells like piss. Because he's the Joker. The first 30 minutes of this movie were just so we could see how much Barbara means to Batman. The second act feels so disjointed from the first act, though. It's like it doesn't belong in the story you began telling. Okay, yeah, now, he did it. Two different stories completely. Time for a flashback. Why stop at two when you can get three? Woo! Three for one? Yay! One, and those things are not the same. Jesus, were there any females anywhere near the writing room for this thing? I have to go up on stage. And nobody laughs! What made this guy want to be a stand-up comedian? Any insight into that? Is he a naturally funny guy? And why was he riding all of his hopes on getting into show business? I'm completely sorry. Hey, some of us have dreams, now, buddy. I'm wondering why this guy, who has an old amusement park for sale, decided to show a potential buyer the place during the middle of the night, and didn't get freaked out at a guy in clown makeup showing up for the appointment. I guess he's never heard of the Joker. There are girls on the street. Or maybe he's in uh, some crime, yeah, involved in crime too? I don't know. Or blow a punchline. Joker thinks that these girls on the street aren't spending their time blowing things. I love you, job or no job. You're good in the sack, and you make me laugh. Yeah, that part. I tried to get my wife to use these as her custom wedding bows at our wedding, but she put the kibosh on that something fierce. Still don't know why. Whenever you're about to get into some <laughs> hardcore Joker research, you need. Yeah, that line was always weird to me. It's like Joker's good in the sack. Uh. This movie is acknowledging a scene from Tim Burton's Batman. That movie, incidentally, that has a completely different Joker origin story, except for the falling and acid part. You can't save everyone, sir. Especially chips you recently banged. What? I mean, you can't save everyone you bang. I mean, you can't save all the chicks. Oh, Barbara, I swear, you're fussier than your mother was. Weird. That's the same exact thing Batman said to her just after coming on his own cape because she suddenly wanted to keep hers clean. What? That's the dirtiest joke I've ever told. Well, sh Did you see the Carrie video? You did? Damn. That must be Colleen. She's early. Oh, We're man. gonna work out. Why did Gordon bring a scrapbook to Barbara's apartment? And why would Barbara invite him if she knows Colleen is coming over to work out? He was just robbing banks then. But the headline specifically says the Joker is a murderer and a homicidal maniac. Joker shoots Barbara right in the uterus for some reason. Jesus, do these writers just f***ing hate women? Also, man, this bullshit. And that was actually in the original the comic, so. At this point, they're all following the comic. Remote. Our venue wasn't built with the disabled. Joker seems to know that his gut shot caused bad girl paralysis. Yeah, that was so kind of weird. Like, for hours. Okay, given the technology, even if you know where he's about to shoot to paralyze someone, so that doesn't necessarily mean you succeeded in paralyzing them. If then he'd have been of marrying age around the late 80s or early 90s. Definitely not a time when old-time sailors were hanging out at bars like they're about to be shipped out to fight the Third Reich. There's nothing really wrong with anything the future Joker is saying here. I just need to point out that the guy in the background is perhaps the stillest motherfucker I have ever seen. Just a moment ago, these crooks snapped at future Joker for not being cool when talking about the robbery he's helping them with. Now they open up an incriminating bag containing a red hood that everyone's seen in the papers, in front of everybody. Can't make a nest without breaking a few eggs. <laughs> That's funny. No, it's cliche. No, it's neither of those. She'll never walk again. Doctor says this after performing the most rudimentary neurological test possible. Also, f you, dude. Did you not see Forrest Gump or Dirty Rotten Scoundrels? No way, he was faking in that movie. Also, uh, if you were bad, I never really figured out what what year months. is this supposed to be in. Like, I know the comic book came out a long time ago, but I'm talking about like this movie in general. Being shot, and paralyzed. Barbara Gordon was also raped because that is some heavy ass sh for a Batman story, let alone a goddamn cartoon. The implication alone is sin-worthy. God damn, how much does this movie hate Batgirl? Now, I'm the f*** right there. If you're telling me Joker had enough time to get the lights on, prepare a lot... And see, the implication probably would have been you know, worth the rated, no rated R, Barbara but I never got the implication that she was raped. Baby dolls. Memories are what our reason is based on. If we deny them, we deny reason itself. Joker expounds this freshman year philosophy to a naked man in a roller coaster who's surrounded by little people. There is no... It's a good time for everybody. Clause. Let's go to the circus. I hate to break it to you, but Joker just spoiled the fact that there's no sanity clause. <gasps> just your dad in a suit. We're a no! Suit it's kind of the trademark with this Red Hood business. Benjamin says this to a person that is already wearing a suit and bow tie. There was an accident this morning. Testing a baby bottle heater. The story actually takes away any motivation that this guy would have to help this gang, but they're going to make him do it anyway. Which is poignant, I guess, the way things are. Some sort of moral lesson learned? I don't know. Yeah. All these underground casino thugs attack with nothing but fists. I don't know about you, but if I were opening my own underground casino, I'd hire thugs that carry guns for security. Guns stop Batman. Fists do not. Holy crap, these are the hottest this side of town hookers I've ever seen. I don't have any doubt that if Joker came up with this song while he was in the asylum. He's had plenty of time to do that. But what I don't think he's had time to do is get all of his cardio folk properly choreographed for this number. Then there's a certain thing I do. This goes on for some time. Amazing how Yeah, the song is new also. Naked, paralyzed daughter. That was okay. Also able to tape, digitize, and upload to this ride multiple pictures of a wounded barber. Will I be able to breathe? Oh, my voice sounds echoey. If the hood is that tight, there's no way his voice would sound echoey. Said there was 
There's no security. They must have altered things since I left. Yeah, but why? Was there a rash of chemical robbery since he left? This f***er is the unluckiest person I've ever seen during an origin story. That man apparently abandons pursuit as soon as Joker falls after scare tripping him. Don't worry, guys. He just landed in the chemicals that change your entire appearance and make you go mad. But they aren't fatal. Rather than go right or left around this dead guy, Batman decides to get out of the car and walk down the completely open midway. Isn't this the f***ing Dark Knight? who always got the drop on criminals by being one step ahead? How did the Joker convince all the freaks of the already closed carnival to fight for him against Batman? Don't worry, guys. Batman's got a banaca spray that helps him treat wounds from Joker. Acid. Never leave home without it. I my hey, he's got Charger coming too. So Joker's whole plan was to drive Commissioner Gordon mad? Feels like he could have come up with a better plan than this, and one that didn't require buying an old amusement park. You had a bad day. Hey, Joker's enough. done some oh, extreme no, stuff just for Bruce's simple plans. Please don't show Bruce's parents getting murdered again. Please don't show Bruce's problem with the surprise trap door, is once you start falling, you shouldn't be able to reach the ledge. But he's Batman. Joker takes out Batman with a fucking lobster pot, and I'm all done with this movie's Joker. He's as sane as he ever was. I wonder if this plan to make Gordon insane would have worked if he had just killed Barbara instead of paralyzing her. I mean, Joker gave Gordon an out in this plan to make him think she was dead when she really wasn't. That's a gift in this twisted world. How would this yeah. gun, which shot real bullets, be able to shoot a joke sign once it was out of bullets? But the second guy said, what do you think I am? Crazy? You just turn it off when I'm halfway across. It takes an hour and 11 minutes for this joke to kill, or whatever it is jokes do. <laughs> that actually was a good joke. I laughed a lot. So what happened? Did Batman kill the Joker? Did he put him back in the asylum where he can apparently escape at will? Whatever the answer is, it's simple as Why would that joke change Batman's mind about killing him? Why would he trust Arkham to keep him detained? There's no good answer. Tell us what to think for God's sake. But wait, there's more. This is part of the story that could only be told after a full minute of credits. Yep. That's right, me. <laughs> Protected bat sex. Yeah, I mean, pretty much to say he said the same things I did. A lot of the same problems I had. I'm dead. I want his family dead. I want his house burnt to the ground. I want to go to the middle of night with a piss on his head. This will turn can be deadly if you eat it. Mm, but a kiss can be even deadlier if you mean it. Oh, that's from, um... taking it to the limit this time. Shit, which one was it? Was it... I think it was the second Batman. Yeah, but with Catwoman on the rooftop Christmas. This length of our primary communications antenna broke off and tore through my bio monitor and ripped the hole in me as well. Ah, uh, I always hate seeing that, but... And the blood, really. Managed to seal the breach in my suit. <laughs> Feel the hatred. I felt like destroying something beautiful. I'm sorry. It's just that. And don't forget, I'm also just a girl standing in front of a boy asking him to love her. Oh, no. God. Oh, God. It's okay. Let it come. Uh, phrasing? Uh, yeah, <laughs> phrasing. But there's more! He's advertising his uh, Ultimate Edition Batman vs Superman. Everything wrong with. Oh man. So yeah, like, like I thought, he agreed. He pretty much did the same things I did. Same problems I had. Uh, more, a lot of nitpick, nitpicking too. But eh, what, I expect that. There, there's no big deal about that. Um. But yeah, like I said, like I already said most of the things I had a problem with and uh, this, you know, pretty much agreed with m many of them. Um, I wouldn't say it was, mo you know, I, th I, I would say the original content was, was kind of a going against Batgirl a lot, like really downplaying her character. Um, the, you know, the killing joke, I don't blame, it's just like, 
you know, that was, you know, yeah, he, Joker did, you know, shoot her because, but he wasn't going for her because she was a woman. He was just going for her because she was the daughter of Commissioner Gordon, and he was the, essentially the main goal. Um, and yeah, that's usually around the area you're supposed to shoot if you want to get the spine. Um, but he did make a good point, just because Joker did outright say, just like, uh, we don't have room for disabled people. Now, some people can say, that, oh, no, it's just, he just means she, she's shot. She can't move her for a while. But others can say, just like, how would he know that she's paralyzed already just because you shot her there? It's like, yeah, that's where she, you're normally supposed to shoot around that area. But that doesn't mean, necessarily guarantee you paralyzed her. And, yeah, that test to see if she was paralyzed, it seemed kind of rudimentary, but... Um, uh, it depends on what on on when this took place, cause I know the comic came out in, uh, I think it was the forties, forties or fifties. It came out during around that time. Uh, so it makes sense that the test for neurological damage would be something not that simple. But if it was more modern age, it's like yeah, why didn't you do more extensive testing to figure it out? whether or not she was paralyzed permanently. You know, but again, we I don't think we got a specific time uh for this movie like in movie, we didn't get a year or anything like that. It looked like it was somewhere around the 50s. So, mm. um and then yeah, even he was surprised just like he, uh, he, he, when he was talking about it's like wait Batgirl be Batman that makes no sense well, what the fuck like, that, it, it came out of nowhere it, it, there was no real lead up to it it was just like yeah, you know just let's have sex what so yeah it, it, it was really really bad whoever made the decision to put that in weren't really thinking it through and and probably thought, you know, a lot of people uh, ship these two. Let's feed the fuel. Like, no, don't do that. Just because you hear about people shipping them does not mean you should do it. It, it, it never works. It never really does unless there's real groundwork set early on that these two should be a couple. So, yeah, when that, that came out, it just felt wrong. Um... So yeah, like I said, it wasn't a a bad movie compared to some of the other bad superhero movies, but compared to the stuff uh, Warner Brothers Animation has come out with, this was average. It was like dangerously average. Was like, what happened? Animation, you know, Warner Brothers Animation. What happened? You were pumping out great movies. You know, you know, some of them were like okay, but then this one came out and just like. What? Why? 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 Certain decisions were just very questionable. But other than that, that's all, pretty much all I have to say. So, um, I don't know what other movie you'll come out with that uh, I have some talk about. So, mm. till then, I'm Tony Dragon. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.